Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Swiss. Continuing on with the Sweet 16, got four more games. These are Friday's games. I already uploaded a video uh, with the four games on Thursday. So if you haven't checked that out, go check it out. Uh, the live stream schedule. So on Thursday, we're going live 10.30 a.m. for the MLB opening day. 10:30 uh, a.m. Eastern time for the MLB show. Then 4 p.m. Eastern time is the Sweet 16 March Madness show with Toast, Andy, and Scoop. Uh, so that's the schedule for Thursday, Friday, probably the same schedule. We haven't just put it up yet. It'll probably be something like that, though. So yeah, four Sweet 16 games on Friday. Let's get it. Welcome to the Swiss. The Swiss. Get the Swiss. First up, North Carolina State Marquette, a two seed versus an 11 seed here. This line opened up Marquette laying six and a half points, and it's still at six and a half here. Total sitting at 151. Uh, betting trends on the NC State side, six and four against the spread on neutral courts, six and seven against the spread in non-conference play, four and one against the spread in their last five. Uh, trends on the Marquette side, 4-3-1 and one against the spread on neutral courts, 6-6-1 six, six and one against the spread in non-conference play, 3-2 and two against the spread in their last five. Uh, recent production from these two teams in the last 10 games, both these teams 7-3 and three in their last 10. Strength of schedule is pretty much even also, 7-10. to 10. As far as games away from home, uh, NC State 7-2 and two away from home in that span, Marquette 5-2. Let's take a look at the matchup for North Carolina State's offense, and you've got to give the edge to NC State here. These are numbers from the last 10 games in NC State. Effective field goal percentage has the edge. Offensive rebounding rate has the edge. Actually, a significant edge. NC State should be active on the offensive glass. Also, turnovers. Edge goes to NC State. So, North Carolina State offense should have the edge here. Uh, as far as shot zones, mid-range shot should be there for NC State. They take a decent amount of... They actually take a lot of them. Uh, in the last 10 games, they're 87th in frequency from the short mid-range, 41st from the long mid-range. Pretty efficient about hitting them, too. 117th and 58th. Uh, Marquette against those two mid-range zones, 287th and 200th in efficiency. On the other side, we got Marquette's offense, and you got to give the edge to Marquette here. I mean, these are numbers from the last 10 games. Got to keep in mind, Tyler Kolek didn't play in a bunch of these games, and Marquette's still 26th in effective field goal percentage. They're also 37th in turnover rate. So Marquette makes their shots, and they protect the basketball. Uh, so yeah, definitely got to give the edge to Marquette on this side. As far as shot zones... The question is going to be, can Marquette get to the basket in this game? Because that's where they want to go. In the last 10 games, they're 50th in shot frequency at the rim. 260th in efficiency, though. So they haven't been wildly efficient scoring down there. NC State, 47th in defensive frequency at the rim, meaning they're not letting you get to the rim to, to take those shots. So that's going to be the battle. Can Marquette get to the basket on this one? I will say the three-point shot should be there for Marquette, though. Uh, not that they take a ton of them in the last 10 games. They're 161st in frequency above the break, but they're 13th in efficiency. So when they take them, they hit them at a very high rate. Uh, NC State defensively against the above the break three-point shot, 157th in efficiency. Uh, so I expect the three-point shot to be there. As far as betting this game, the run ends for NC State here. Definitely on Marquette. I mean, the NC State run should have ended on Saturday. I had Oakland. I actually had Oakland plus six and a half. So the bet actually won. Uh, but NC State got him in overtime. I expect Marquette to win this one by double digits. So I'm on Marquette. Next game. Gonzaga versus Purdue. A one seed versus five seed. Lined open up Purdue laying four and a half. It's now up to five and a half. Total sitting at 154 and a half. Uh, betting trends on the Zag side, five and four against the spread on a neutral court, seven and eight against the spread in non-conference play. They're coming into this one four and one against the number in their last five. On the Purdue side, six, two and one against the spread on neutral courts, nine, two and two against the spread in non-conference play. They're coming into this one just two and three against the spread in their last five. Recent production from these two teams in the last 10 games, uh, Gonzaga nine and one in their last 10, seven and one away from home in that span, 48th in strength of schedule. Now Purdue's up at 30. 33rd in strength of schedule so purdue has played the slightly stronger schedule they have two losses instead of one they're eight and two in their last 10 five and two away from home let's take a look at the matchup for the zags offense and edge goes to gonzaga here except for free throw rate uh, you can see effective field goal percentage in the last 10 games gonzaga's first not that purdue's defense is bad they're 50th but 
Gonzaga's been hitting their shots, man. Uh, turnovers also huge advantage to Gonzaga. Purdue not going to be able to create turnovers in this game. But like I said, the Zags are going to really struggle to get to the line here. Free throw rate, 24th to 261st. Shot zones for Gonzaga's offense. Uh, Zags should definitely be able to score on the interior in this one. Uh, you can see shot frequency numbers in the last 10. 69th at the rim, 75th in the paint. And they've been very efficient with their shots down there. So scoring on the interior is a huge part of Gonzaga's offense. Uh, you can see Purdue's numbers on the interior defensively. 212th at the rim, 148th in the paint. Now they are 49th in frequency at the rim, meaning they're pretty good about keeping their opponents away from the basket, but either way, I think this is a favorable matchup for the Zags offense. But now we look at the other side of the court, and this is where we start to find value on Purdue. Purdue's offense has, has the huge edge here. In the last 10 games, look at the rebounding discrepancy. Fourth in offensive rebounding rate to 289th defensively. So Purdue should have plenty of second chance opportunities. Purdue's got the advantage in pretty much every single category here in the last 10 games. And that's against a slightly stronger schedule as well. I will say though, Gonzaga does have good defensive numbers against the mid-range shot. Third and 82nd against a short and long mid-range shot. Not that Purdue is reliant on the mid-range shot, but they do take a lot of shots from that zone. I don't know. That's pretty thin, that angle right there. But if you're looking to bet the Zags and you're just searching for something, you could say Purdue takes a lot of mid-range shots and Gonzaga defends the mid-range shot well. But for me, that's not enough. Uh, I'm on Purdue here. I have Purdue winning the whole thing in my bracket. I have Purdue winning the championship. They haven't let me down yet, so I'm not turning my back on them. Uh, give me Purdue minus five and a half or whatever it's at next game. Duke versus Houston, one seed versus four seed. This is a good one here. Uh, this line opened up Houston laying four points. It's still minus four on most sports books. Total sitting at 134 and a half. Betting trends on the Duke side. Uh, Blue Devils, 4-1 against the spread on neutral courts this year. 9-4 and four against the spread in non-conference play. Coming into this one, 3-2 against the spread in their last five. On the Houston side, 5-4 and four against the spread on neutral courts. 8-6-1 and one against the spread in non-conference play. Also 3-2 and two against the spread in their last five. Recent production from these two teams in the last 10 games. Got a point towards Houston here. Uh, Houston, 9-1 and one in their last 10. 7-1 away from home in that span. Duke, 7-3 and three in their last 10. 5-2 and two away from home in that span. But look at the strength of schedule. Houston, 6th. Duke 21st. So in the last 10 games, Houston has the more impressive resume against a stronger schedule. So let's take a look at the matchup for Duke offensively. And obviously we know Houston has an elite defense, one of the best defenses in the country this year. That being said, we're looking at numbers from the last 10 games and I I may have to give the edge to Duke based on these numbers. Look at the rebounding. Duke, eighth in offensive rebounding rate in the last 10 games to 357th for Houston's defense. So on paper, Duke should get plenty of second chance opportunities. I'll give the slight edge to Duke on this side. But I have some bad news for Duke's offense. Uh, both of the shot zones that they frequent Houston locks down. So the first one is the short mid-range shot. Duke 103rd in frequency from that zone, 87th in efficiency. Houston's defense, 23rd in defensive efficiency against that shot. And then you pull up the above the break three. We know this Duke team's relying on hitting outside shots. 81st in frequency, 7th in efficiency. Duke's been shooting the lights out. Well, I don't know if that's going to be there against Houston. 41st in defensive efficiency against the above the break three in the last 10. And that's against the sixth strongest schedule in the country in that span. On the other side of the court, we got Houston's offense against Duke's defense. And based on the numbers from the last 10 games, I guess I give the edge to Houston here because of rebounding and turnovers. Uh, offensive rebounding rate, 88 to 185 Houston. Turnover rate, 51 to 175 Houston. So on paper here, Houston should have the maximum number of possessions. So I'll give the slight edge to Houston's offense based on these numbers. Shot zones for Houston's offense. Uh, the mid-range shot should be there for the Cougars in this one. 130th in frequency from the short mid-range. 69th in frequency from the long mid-range. 100th in efficiency from both. So the mid-range shot is definitely a part of Houston's offense. Duke, terrible defensive numbers from those two zones. 200th and 266th. So yeah, mid-range shot should be there for Houston, but I don't know if the three-point shot is going to be there for Houston. Uh, they're actually 34th in shot frequency from above the break in the last 10. So Houston has been taking these threes. Duke defensively has been great out there. 27th in frequency, 113th in efficiency. So yeah, Houston should be able to get the mid-range shots off, but I don't know if we can count on the three-point shot being there for Houston. And as far as betting this game, I haven't bet this one yet. Based on the numbers I'm looking at from the last 10 games, these two teams seem pretty close. So I probably would lean towards Duke plus the points. I'm going to wait until the live show. I want to see what Andy and Toast and Scoop are betting on this one. I'll probably tail one of those guys. 
Um, but I'll say I'm, I'm leaning towards Duke as of right now. Next game. Creighton, Tennessee, two seed versus three seed. Tennessee laying two and a half points at open. It's still a two and a half. Total sitting at 144. Betting trends on the Creighton side. Three and three against the spread on neutral courts. Nine and four against the spread in non-conference play. Coming into this one, four and one against the number in their last five. On the Tennessee side, trends don't look as good. Just two and five against the spread on neutral courts this year. Six, eight and one against the spread in non-conference play. Two and three against the spread in their last five coming into this one. Uh, recent production from these two teams in the last 10 games. Both of these teams are eight and two in their last 10. Creighton, four and two away from home in that span. Tennessee, five and one away from home in that span. Strength of schedule, slight edge towards Creighton, but they're pretty much even, 29th to 41st. Let's take a look at the matchup for Creighton's offense in this one. And based on these numbers in the last 10 games, you got to give the slight edge to Tennessee's defense, but Creighton's been hitting their shots. They're sixth in effective field goal percentage in the last 10 games. So Creighton is, their shots are falling right now, which is obviously huge. Look at rebounding, look at turnovers, look at free throw rate. All three of those categories, major advantage for Tennessee's defense. So definitely got to give the edge to the Vols defense here. The good news for Creighton's offense, though, uh, Tennessee doesn't have the best looking numbers against the three point shot. And that's what Creighton does. They're 16th in shot frequency from above the break, 13th in shot frequency from the corner three. So this Creighton team launches three point shots. And look at their efficiency numbers from above the break, 18th. They take a lot of shots on the perimeter. They make Make a lot of shots on the perimeter tennessee 347th in frequency from above the break in the last 10 games so tennessee's defense allowing a ton of attempts from out there uh three-point shot should be there for creighton in this one on the other side of the court we got the vols offense and you got to give the edge to creighton here i mean look at effective field goal percentage in the last 10 games 48th to 257th shots are just not falling for tennessee now they're a good offensive rebounding team but Creighton isn't really letting opponents get active on the offensive glass. They're 51st in that category. Uh, Tennessee does have the turnover edge, so Creighton is probably going to struggle to create turnovers, but Tennessee's not going to get to the foul line, 129 to second. So yeah, based on these numbers in the last 10, edge Creighton defense. And then when we pull up shot zones for Tennessee's offense, this is the icing on the cake for me. I am on Creighton because of this. Uh, Tennessee, just like Creighton, takes a ton of threes. They're 89th in frequency from above the break, 73rd from the corner. Efficiency numbers back at 221st and 201st. So they're taking a lot of threes, but they're not really hitting them like Creighton is. Look at Creighton's defense on the perimeter. 35th from above the break, 44th from the corner. Creighton plays great defense against the three-point shot. So yeah, I'm on Creighton here. I think they win this game outright. Give me Creighton plus two and a half, probably take the money line too. Like I said earlier, live streams for the Sweet 16 are both at 4 p.m. Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern time, we'll go through Thursday's four games, and then we'll be back on Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern time to go through Friday's four. Uh, so if you, if you could make it, we'd love to see in the comments. MLB opening day, Thursday morning, 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Me, Toast, and Prop Beaver are going through. MLB baseball is officially here. Uh, we're all excited for it. Hope to see you there in that live stream. That's at 10.30 a.m. Eastern time. Yeah, should be a really fun weekend. A lot of action out there to bet on. Uh, remember to bet responsibly. Pick your spots and be smart. Let's have ourselves a green weekend. I'll talk to you guys in the Discord.